Lord have mercy. This is going to be a wild show. Uh, Why is that, Christian? <laughs> you know what, man? I am freaking excited about this because if I'm going to watch Halloween Resurrection, it's got to be with a Halloween fan. I mean, I can't watch this. I can watch this by myself, but this is way more fun to sit with somebody and just this is how you're supposed to watch this movie. Like, you know what I mean? Like, you can't watch oh, yeah. this by yourself. Yeah, I I haven't watched this movie in like three years. So this is interesting. This is going to be exciting. It's not that I don't remember it. I well, I remember the movie, um, but uh, I haven't watched it in three years. So this should be quite interesting to dig back into. There we go. Now this ranks this ranks like top two, top three for you, right? Personally, top four, top four. Okay. No, here's the thing, uh, dude. I I'm genuinely excited. Like I, I was, this is what I was gonna say right before we went we went live. Okay, so they show the menu screen for Halloween Resurrection, and like you heard the little music cue right before you hit play on the Screen Factory Blu-ray, and they had the nice cool shot of Brad Luray. and yes. I was like, dude, he, I was like, dude, he kind of looks pretty badass right there. Like <laughs> there is, I guarantee you. I am going to talk about a few things in this movie that I like without question. We're going to talk about things here. I won't trash it. You know what I mean? Like everybody knows resurrection is what it is. Like if you want to dissect it like that, dude, more power to you. I'm not going to do that with this movie. I will point out things I like. I will also point out things that I think are God awful. And I think that's going to make it fun. So, yeah. So this is what I want to say, everybody. Right now, we are at, if you're watching the Scream Factory Blu-ray, hit play, let the Miramax logo show up, and then as soon as you see Dimension come up from the black screen, hit pause. So get there right now, and we're going to talk for like an extra minute and a half, and we're going to get rolling, because I'm just ready to watch this movie. But I think I wanted to show you this, Nick. When I went to Spencer's last week, I went to this section, and I thought these were like, I didn't know what these were, but they have these little jars with caps on them. And uh, I found no. this one, and it's it's a uh, Friday the Thirteenth. Oh, and I was asking, yeah. this is how, this is how ignorant I am. I asked the guy. I said, "Hey, man, I'm gonna buy this. You this little cool jar. What is this? I was gonna put my guitar picks and stuff in it." He goes, "That's for drugs." <laughs> I was <laughs> like, "Oh, okay. You pop it off and you put your stash in there. Like that's a stash box or a my stash fiance jar." May or may not have one that she got from Spencer's that's used for that purpose. So yeah. <laughs> But yeah, they had a Friday. I have a Nightmare on Elm Street one that my wife converted into a candle because my wife makes candles yeah. and she took it and she filled it up with candle and she used uh, like firewood. So it was awesome. I'm looking for it somewhere. It fell somewhere. I got to find it. But I, if I find another one that Spencer's again, I'll buy it. But when I saw this Friday the 13th one, I was like, oh, that's really cool. I like buying weird shit like this stuff that's <laughs> like, you know, weird branded. I love this kind of stuff. So I put my guitar picks in it. Yeah, you know. I mean, you can make plenty of use out of that. You don't need to use it for drugs, Christian. Drugs are bad. Drugs are bad. Uh, we're about to get dr- high right now. But, dude, look, let's for, let's be real. Halloween Resurrection, we're about to get started, dude. What are you expecting from this watch right now? Pain. What no, else besides uh, pain? <laughs> um, amusement. I mean, really, because if you can take this movie for what it is, and go into it like if it was the first time I was watching it, right? You know, after Resurre- uh, H2O, I would have been like, What the hell? But like now that I know what it is, I can find amusement in it. You know, you laugh at how bad it is sometimes, you're genuinely surprised at some of the good things that are in there. So, amusement cool. I, I'm not even gonna add anything to it. You ready to get going? I'm gonna I'm count us down, yes, sir. All right, everybody, if you're watching with us again, get at the dimension logo if you're not there yet just hit pause on this get set up and hit play in this on this video again or if you're on spotify which we're now on spotify how could i not bring that up we're on spotify we're going to be hitting all the other services that's just going to come in a few days but the guy i got everything on spotify boom i've got a few more i've got to put on um i'll probably make the live stream ones live the exclusive to youtube but I've got to add the Lost Boys one and a few others. But I know that I had people reach it. Man, it was it was such a blessing. People were reaching out the other day and they were like, dude, thank you. This got me through work today. And pe- I mean, this one guy hit me up. He goes, dude, I listened to all of them all day at work. I was like, Jesus <laughs> Christ, you listen to us all day at work? <laughs> you must have been really freaking bored. <laughs> yeah. 
but it's been, it's been a blessing. It's been it's been fantastic. The support, man. Yeah, yeah, we appreciate that, guys. No matter what medium you use to digest us, we just appreciate that you listen. Yeah, that's right. But without further ado, I'm gonna count us down. Here we go: five, four, three, two, one. There's the theme. And it's a great rendition of the theme. It, it really is. I bought this on iTunes a few years ago because I was like, I want to listen to some Halloween music. And I, I, I typed it in. I was going to buy it on iTunes or whatever. And then Resurrection popped up before anything else. And I was like, I'm going to buy the Resurrection score. And I was like, damn, this really isn't that bad. No, it's a good theme. I hate these opening credits, though. They're so plain and boring. I'm like, really? This is what it's come to? That's, but here's the thing. That's true, Nick. But na- nowadays, I do kind of miss that because it's like you, you you don't spoil anything in the movie anymore. Like if you go into a movie that you haven't seen, Friday the 13th was the world's they, – they, they all – it was white text, black screen with music. I'm not saying that everything needs to do that nowadays. Trust me. I really love 2018's Pumpkin and the credits. But I do kind of miss that today because it's just like the, nowadays the whole movie is montages of the movie with the title stuff and it's like damn i'm already seeing all this shit yeah i'd rather yeah. you know yeah it's simplistic but it's just i just mean i guess in the vein of you know the halloween franchise we could have a little bit better yeah, yeah is pretty i don't know not out there but there's a lot going on it seems and this one's just like ha, yeah. just kidding I liked Resurrections with all the newspaper clippings and all that. Not Resurrections, H2Os, and obviously the pumpkins are great. But, dude, look at this. This alley shot is, dude. It's fantastic. I mean, look at it. Look at this. It kind of reminds me of Six right there. There's little shades of blue and everything. Mm-hmm. Man. You remember on the, uh, We I'm sure, man, you have watched it many, many times on the uh, Halloween was it the 25 years of terror, which I know Sean hates it. I still love yeah. that documentary. Do you remember so the I. way they were talking? I think, uh, Massey was talking about like, he was like, did, did he win? Was he the guy that won the, uh, some contest to go to the premiere of resurrection or was yes. it somebody else? Yeah. I, it was Massey. Can you imagine the, ex- I guarantee you, even before this movie came out, the excitement was probably just, off the charts all oh, through the roof because of h2o i'm sure and then people i don't know man i really don't know how i would have reacted following that movie and then going to see this in theaters and just being right. like what now look here's the deal let me ask you this okay so we don't need to educate the audience on this why this movie has jamie in the role that she does because everybody's heard it by that point let me ask you this do you like what she did in this movie and her performance? Uh, it's one of the better performances in the movie, but I still don't think it's a very good performance now. I think it seems unspirited. You, you think she's checked out? Yes. Yeah, I, this was clearly for a paycheck. Nowadays, she, she says H2O was for a paycheck. I don't think it was for, at the time. Um, but when she says this was for a paycheck, I completely believe her. Well, I mean, was she contracted? I, I know I said yes. we weren't going to educate the people, but she was, she was contractually obligated, and the it was it was kind it of was her idea up. too, right? Initially, she came up with this. If well, you guys aren't killing him. You have to kill me in the next movie. Yes, because initially he was going to die in H two O. Right, and then after rewrites and stuff, before they started shooting, they were like, "So here's what we've got going on. We want to make another one." You know, you sign the dotted line. Basically, you have to be in it. She's like, well, the only way I'm being in it is if you're killing me like right off the bat. So they're like, all right, cool. And then we'll just get Busta in there and everything will be fine. Yeah. Dude, like I said, like, dude, LL. OK, hold he on. The bar so high. Let, 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 let's just talk about this real quick. So how the hell is it plausible that Michael swapped like what does this guy look like like is he he has to be an i'm trying to legit this is why this movie in its in its rawest form is ridiculous because of the premise he swapped with the paramedic he got the outfit of the paramedic put the paramedic in the michael suit and how did he get away with it he said he he crushed crushed his larynx yeah 
I mean, you're really, really stretching the boundaries of realism with that. Uh, yeah. But, you know, whatever, I guess. It, if you can sell it to the general public, which I don't even think they really did because most people, even if they're just casual fans, accept H2O as like the end of the franchise. Yeah, some days I tell myself that that's Michael at the end of H2O and he's dead. I mean, that was him. Um, but I don't know. Other days like today, like I was looking forward. I was like, man, I'm going to have fun watching Resurrection. It's just a it's just a movie at the end of the day, you know, but uh, I'll tell you one thing about this movie that I do like. And I, I almost want us to try to rewrite this movie. After he for there's the Annabelle doll, right? Yeah. Raggedy Ann. What is she doing? She's stuffing the pills in the doll. Mm hmm. Oh, Jesus Christ, Lord, that's a lot of pills in there. <laughs> um, the idea of Michael finally not having a family member to chase after is so cool to me because I don't think it's ever been done. I want to rewrite yeah. this movie. Like, I want to rewrite it. I would I think if I would think in my mind going to his house makes sense after he's killed his last family member. Because this movie, there's no curse of Thorn, right? Yeah. yeah. What would cause the plot of the movie, I would say? I, honestly, w would the plot even change? Or would you just have to get rid of certain characters? And would you lose the... Like, to me, it makes sense that he goes home and people go to his home. So the terror, you go to the terror kind of thing. Kind of like Crystal Lake, you know? I would have done one of two things. I would have either just had it be Michael's trek home, essentially. Just like annihilating people on the way till he gets home. Or I would have had it be Michael gets home, and since it's like the spooky house in the neighborhood, kids want to go there on Halloween and break in and, and you know get drunk and party and blah, blah, blah. And I wouldn't have done the reality show angle. I just thought that I know they were capitalizing on the times, but I just thought it was executed so poorly that it just should have never been, you know? personally but yeah yeah you know i like this guy harold yeah i do too <laughs> i just man i just like the idea so much of michael not chasing a family member oh yeah yeah it's great i mean it's kind of what a lot of turned a lot of people on to the idea of halloween 2018 at first because they were like cool she's not a sister anymore i can get down with that yeah i mean and that's true but it's still still feel i guess it still feels like it even though it's like because it's oh, yeah. it's lori i don't know i just completely aimless not or not aimless but like dude it's like he goes home and then people go into his house but michael's like he he it's like he becomes a legend again is this guy still real no michael died a long time ago oh they say he escaped as a paramedic or whatever and yeah. then like he's just he's hard to track down kind of thing and i don't know the possibilities the possibilities seem cool to me. Yeah, but unfortunately, because this movie was so panned critically and commercially, I think that the team behind just Halloween in general, uh, Malik Akkad and, and all them, will never go this route again because one bad, one failed experiment, actually, I guess you could say two uh, because of Halloween 3, although it has quite the fan base now. Um, I just don't think they'll ever go this route again. With, you know, Michael being completely aimless. Yeah. Well, it's like, it seems like every time Halloween goes too far, it's reset. You mm -hmm. can count part four as kind of a reset. Then you can count H2O as a reset. So you look at the previous entries, Halloween six, you know, went all the way, especially nowadays seeing the producers cut reset, mm -hmm. uh, resurrection, you had uh, Rob Zombie reset after the Rob Zombie. Yeah, Rob Zombie's Halloween two. If I could have seen any sequel to any of them, I, I probably. I, I don't know. I, I guess I'm a little torn. I love Rob Zombie's Halloween two, as we talked about last time, and I told you a lot of people were really. I, I, we did not get much hate at all on that. As a matter of fact, yeah. a lot of people seem very happy that we discussed it. Part of me would love to see a sequel to Rob Zombie's Halloween two and where it would have gone. But what the hell would have happened is the is my, you know. Yeah. The only way you could have gone was, you know, from the theatrical ending, you could have had the same thing as they were trying to do with Halloween 3D initially, where Lori was institutionalized 
you know? Yeah. All also, right, so we- this right here is so dumb because he doesn't notice the, the body right in front of the washer when he goes up to the washer, but all of a sudden the body's there when he backs up. It, well, I like I like Michael dropping into the frame, and that was yeah. a recall from the last one, right? So they actually, because mm-hmm. they did that. So I like the way Michael looks in this one, you know? Yeah. I think the mask is pretty cool. I like that silhouette, shot, that shadow right there. I think that, yeah. I do think that's pretty cool. Some of it just, like some of the shots in this movie, you'll you'll see almost seem very amateur at times and it's rick rosenthal so they shouldn't like the dude's directed plenty of films he's directed a halloween film that was you know pretty dang successful so i I just sometimes i feel like he's trying too hard yeah well i I also want you to know something about rick he did a movie i believe this was rick the legend has it he directed a movie called the birds Two lands end in like the early 90s and it was so bad that he 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 gave it the uh, there's a director's name that that guys use when they don't want to own their movies called Alan Smithy. You've probably seen it on movies before. I think Hellraiser four is directed by Alan Smithy, but hmm. I, I think that uh, Kevin Yeager was the one who actually directed Halloween four. I mean Hellraiser four, but uh, Rick Rick has had his fair share of uh is of duds, you know? yeah. That's why I think a lot of people are always like, yo, well, you know, Rick Rosenthal did great with Halloween, too. And I'm like, let's be honest. Most of that was John Carpenter. Like, well, yeah, I mean, the, the script was written, you know, uh, the settings were confined pretty well. We Dean found Cundy, out later, you know, John yeah. said um, multiple times he would go pick up shots without That's telling true. Rick. And it That's was true. like, we need to add this. We need to add that. And Rick, there was this back and forth between them because it was basically like rick's like is this your movie or mine like well yeah you know i never you know we could watch all we watch all these documentaries and stuff but i always wonder man what the hell really happened with some of this stuff you know it's like we'll never truly truly know we can get a good sense but we need a better we need a new halloween documentary covering the whole franchise what we need i'll tell you what we need the Crystal Lake Memories book is still the best book I've ever seen about the franchise because it's all print. So everything that's in that book, and I urge everybody to get that book if you haven't, it's raw. Everybody hated each other on the making of those Friday movies. This one, this director was a jerk. Corey Feldman was a piece of crap. Ted Ted White wanted to beat his ass. Uh, Joe Zito was a trash director who didn't care about his actors and tried to kill him in freezing cold water and everybody's blunt in the book. And I watch the crystal Lake memories and it's a different story. Yeah. Books are, st- I mean, going up, if they did a Halloween book like that, that maybe even Peter Brackey could somehow do, that would be great. That would be great. But yeah, um, just anything. Yeah. It also seems like, you know, w- you know, it's hard to say with Jamie how she really how she's how she's under contract and all right now with Blumhouse and this and that. So it's like she wouldn't do a book right now anyway or be interviewed about it to be real because I mean, I think I think we got a pretty good damn sense of what she thought when she did that horror hound convention because she did that she did that just just to raise money. That was 2012. There was no chance in hell she was even close to think 2012 or 13, probably 13, but there was no chance in hell. She was thinking about doing another Halloween movie. She was even talking about, Oh, I think she said, she said, never say never, but it would have to be a damn good script. Uh, yeah, which I, I guess, you know, the script of the money was good for 18. Uh, but she, I felt like she was pretty damn honest during that. In, which is a great uh, convention video. I mean, you can go on YouTube and watch it. I remember I was so excited when that finally got posted on YouTube because I wanted to be there so bad. Yeah, same. So, um, something sad I saw on Facebook. Um, oh, we'll, we'll enjoy this. If you're tracking this with us, guys, right now, Michael's upside down and she's trying to. What the hell is she doing? Is she reaching for his mask? Are you crazy? It never made, it never made sense. She, I'd be terrified. Yeah, well, she he put his hands over his ears, and she I was like, "Oh my god, is this going to be like what happened last time?" I need to be sure. Like, what do you mean you need to be sure? You don't even know what his face looks like. Like, that's what I never understood. Lori has never, like, she doesn't know what his face looks like. She saw it for a split second in '78. Like, come on. And the kids. And also, <laughs> yeah. Oh god. 
Is it cringy to you? Oh, yeah. <laughs> when I was younger, I always thought it was kind of cool, kind of badass. And now I'm like, no. And the fall, the fall's worse. Look at this fall. That looked pretty. I mean, look, I can't tell. Like, was how did they do that? It didn't look that bad to me. It, it was, uh, I believe, green screen. It was screen, uh, green screen. Yeah. I don't know, dude. I I've never liked it. I don't know. I do like. I would have. I, I would have kept the kiss, but taken out the line. See you in hell. Yeah. Just kiss him and fall. That would have been me. And then this. His clown boy. Mm -hmm. Harold. Here you go, buddy. Give him the knife. <laughs> Harold, you're not going to be getting out for a long time, buddy. No. Is that supposed to be like a John Wayne Gacy type? Yeah. <laughs> See that mask on the wall back there? Mm -hmm. uh, it looks like a Rob Zombie Halloween mask, that paper yeah. mache looking thing. <laughs> <laughs> man, oh man. There's a cool uh, alley shot. I do not like that walk. <laughs> He looks like he's got something shoved up his ass. <laughs> he's, he's hiking. Yeah. <laughs> Turtle head poking out or something. Hey, like let's that. let's give credit. I love the blue lighting. Yeah. Um, it's a cool little shot, man. Now this is when the movie really kicks it up a notch. Why was that Halloween Resurrection so quick on screen? You notice it barely yeah. it was barely there. It's like they're embarrassed by the name, so let's just barely show. Yeah. I liked the the work print title better. Homecoming. Wait up. Is that Rick? Yep. Why does he look older there than he did like in like the well that maybe maybe he doesn't just look older. I think it's just his hair. Yeah, he looks Dude, he nobody's looks paying attention. <laughs> <laughs> no nobody's paying attention. <laughs> Except Sarah. She's literally the only one. Trying to give us some like Lord Strode vibes. Yeah. Was this shot on was this shot on film? Do you know if it was I mean it it looks I guess it looks like film. This is it 2000? I'm pretty sure it was film, yeah. Look I've at this bro, I'd ride a damn skin. <laughs> hey dude. Best way to get around campus. Katie Sackoff. She did a video Justin sent me it last night. Guys, if you haven't seen it on YouTube, it's great. Katie Sackoff, who's the blonde, she did a video where she watched Halloween Resurrection on her YouTube channel and reacted to her in Halloween Resurrection. And she was oh, not God. coming to the movie. I got to see it. It was, it was her first role. She was like, this was my first role in a movie. Like, I've never watched it. It's funny. It's It's enjoyable. Dude, I'm 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 a little bummed out. Fright Rags did Halloween Resurrection shirts, and the other day they 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 restocked a House with Us and Corpses shirt that I've always wanted, and I was like, oh hell yeah, let me grab it. I go on the website. I uh, I put the shirt in the cart, and I was like, let me go to their collections to see what they got, and I remembered they had a bunch of Resurrection shirts, and they had the Trick or Treat motherfucker shirt, and I was like. <laughs> I said to myself, I'm getting it. I don't care. It's sold out. Oh, of course. Just think about that, dude. It was sold out. That means I mean, people yeah. bought the damn shirt. <laughs> it's a memorable line, whether it's for a good or bad reason. All right. Now, Nick, let's not just trash this movie. Let's, like I said, I want to fix it. Let's recast this film. Who stays in the movie? Who stays in this movie? Bianca Kyla can stay. Sarah, the the brunette, she can stay. She's not awful. 
I agree. I um, completely agree. Rudy, the the chef guy that they were just talking to, he can stay. He's funny. I like uh-huh. Rudy. Katie Sackhoff's got to go. Got to go. Um, what about Panny this Boy right here? <laughs> yeah, Panny, Panny Boy, boy can stay because he's funny. I just love the <laughs> he's about to do. All right. What about Brad Luray? Can we keep him? Oh, hell no. <laughs> you don't like him? No. I don't. I don't think that the the look of Myers is bad in this movie. I just think that his portrayal isn't very good. So he can't stay, in my opinion. The, the look can stay. Well, let's recast him. Let's recast him. Let's recast him for the look of this for this film, though. Like to me, George Wilbur. I was gonna say that's fine. I as much as I love Wilbur, who's my favorite, I just feel like that would have been it would I don't know. He just he, you know, he's older. Um, and the, the Myers from H2O isn't very similar to the Myers you got in Halloween 4 or Halloween 6. They're different in very discernible ways. So if you're going to make a sequel to H2O, just go back to Duran. And, um, you know, he even said he was going to do it, but they never asked him. It was like, they just didn't ask. It was like, I would have done it. So. That's true. Um, recast uh we won't even recast we'll just get rid of these two we're just going to get rid of this whole thing this whole i aming this he's a freshman in high school i aming a college student an adult woman he's never met um yeah no we get rid of this That's you don't like stupid. him I, he's a fine actor he is i don't like i and i know the purpose of it later in the movie is like oh they like communicate and he helps her get out yeah it's that that's fine, but some of the scenes where it's just him and his friends sitting there talking while he's doing it, and his friends making jokes at his, exp- at his expense, we don't need that. So we can get rid of that. Yeah. Um. Dangertainment. They have this shirt available still on Fright Rags. <laughs> you need a Dangertainment shirt, dude. Oh, dude, don't even get me started. People have been telling me they're gonna buy me some. <laughs> Busta obviously gets recast. Um. Let me ask you this recast or just redirected and i'm not talking about a new director but redirect in the sense of busta let's you know not act like we're reading lines to ourselves so much i mean do you think the film was rushed or do you think busta is sal was it the script or was it busta let's really try to break this down i think it's both because some of these characters have some pretty cringy lines in this movie so you can definitely not say the script was great um But like these right here, these little like intros they're filming, they're all so bad. I mean, they're so bad. Every time I watch this movie, I'm like, dumb, dumb. So yeah, the script is a big part of that. But Busta, I can't remember where I saw this from or where I heard it from. It might have been on one of the special features. Busta ad-libbed a bunch of stuff. So Busta does deserve some blame because some of his dumb moments in this movie were just him on a whim. Like, I'm going to say, who better than Wa Chung Lee whooping everybody's ass while he's smoking a cigarette when he's in his hotel room? Like, that was <laughs> Buffett. That was ad libbed. Yeah. And it's just, it's dumb. So, and, and do you feel that partially when you get a, at, at the time, Buster Rhymes was, was very, very popular? Mm-hmm. Do you think when you get somebody like that in the film, it's hard to, basically say hey that sucked like you think that was part oh, of the yeah. problem oh yeah yeah because he was something of like a kingmaker you know it was oh we got busta freaking rhymes in our movie the difference was busta in this movie probably it was a, it was a totally different environment than h2o h2o was a big budget you know you've got Jamie Lee Curtis you've got um it's an anniversary film. So I'm sure there was a bunch of seriousness with that movie. And L- so LL Cool J knew how to, okay. Yeah. I'm a very popular hip hop artist and I could steal the show. He could I'm act though. Yes. L- like, LL, gonna- LL yeah. could act. And he set a piece. He, like I said, did one great thing. One bad thing. He did a great job in the movie. My favorite character in H2O, but he made a cod think, well, I guess acting's really not that hard. Yes. <laughs> Let's get Buster and- Rhymes. You know, he took it, he took it seriously because it probably wasn't hard because it was a very serious production. Whereas this, you can already tell just by the look of it, it's lower budget than H2O. There are no big name actors or actresses at all. Jamie Lee probably shot all of her stuff in a day by herself. Um, 
Oh yeah, she and was all, she was probably in and out with with yeah. that week. So it's just not as serious of a, of a production. So Busta probably thought, and they probably did just say, "Be you, man. Your fans will love to see that. Be you." It's like, did they show yeah, up to her- see this movie though? <laughs> no. <laughs> All right, now let me ask you this. All right, let's recast Buster Rhymes. Okay, I'll I'll I'll, I'll concede. We're gonna recast Buster Rhymes. I'm gonna give you a couple options. Okay. And I'm gonna try to stay true to the time. I'm not gonna recast today. Yeah. Uh. I'll tell you what. I'm done. Just let these marinate in your head. Chris Tucker. Exhibit. Um, 50 Cent, Omar Epps, um, Ice T, Ice Cube, uh, and I'll throw in a wild card, Eminem. Oh, dude, I love Eminem, but I'm sorry, I'm not, I'm not going Eminem. <laughs> he couldn't, Eminem couldn't. He, dude, I, I read somewhere that he said that after he did Eight Mile, he said he would never do a movie ever again because it was so much work. Yeah, well, he has been in, he's been in movies since then, but just in very small roles. He's in the movie The Interview, uh, with Seth Rogen and James Franco, and it's oh, I love that movie. It's whole, the, his oh, Kim Jong Un. <laughs> yeah, but his segment in that movie is hilarious. Um, and he, he sells it. He can act, but um. If I'm being honest, probably Ice Cube or Omar Epps. I'm going Exhibit. I, w- I was going to say Exhibit before you said ex- those two. I just think Exhibit could have done a little bit better, you know? I'll give him credit, too. Yeah, Exhibit could have done better. Oh, man. So we're going to put Chris Sarandon back in the role. We're going to put Exhibit in charge. What about Tyra Banks? She's staying or she going? I just think the character entirely gets eliminated. She serves no purpose at all. None. There's not a consequential thing that her character does or says in this entire movie. That character could have just been gone and you wouldn't even noticed. I completely agree with that. Maybe we could have that could have that could have afforded an extra week of shooting, <laughs> you <Yeah>. know, <laughs> which yeah. would have probably been helped. Here's the thing. Okay, I don't now I sound like I'm becoming the apologist for this movie, and that's not the case, but Given the time that this movie was made, do you think you can allow a little bit of leniency to the technology style of this movie and the stuff? Because it was very forward thinking. Yeah, it was very new. You know, I mean, the footage you see in the Blair Witch Project doesn't look very great, does it? No, it's very new. So I I will relax on that. I'm not going to. You know, hate on them for the, the quality or the use of the technology. No, because I think that's one of the best parts about the movie is capitalizing on the, that technology. Um, the problem is it's just not done effectively. It's not scary. You know, the right. Blair Witch Project is scary. Not a part of this movie is it, with this footage is scary. They just don't use it right, I guess, you know. And that's the ultimate. And then, you know, I'm obviously I'm getting way towards the end. But like, dude. If if Buster Rhymes would have died in this movie and Michael would have killed him in the fire, do you think a lot of people would have been like their hatred wouldn't have been as as uh, strong? Like if Michael yeah. would have killed him, yeah. Buster, you would have gotten a moment where you'd hear people nowadays like, "I'm just glad Buster Rhymes died in the movie." Now yeah. the argument you'd get is just, "Why is fucking Buster Rhymes in the movie?" You know what I mean? So, but if yeah. he would have died, it would have given you a little bit of payoff. Hey, so I just wanted to bring up, I remember watching the special features of this movie, that shot where we saw the van pull up in front of the Myers house. Mm-hmm. I didn't realize that, that they built that Myers house, but in a warehouse and they green screened the background. And that blew my mind because it looked so great in the movie. Uh, so that was, it was a short shot. They didn't hold on it very long. When you saw the van in the driveway and the guys get out of the van with their cameras, that mm-hmm. background is fake. Yep, and I, that blew me away. I mean, it really did. So, uh, kudos to that. That was pretty cool. All a soundstage in um, Ontario, I think. Yeah, yeah, which makes sense why they probably got Brad Lorray to do the role because he's a yep. Canadian dude, and they they work cheap apparently. Especially, I mean, they they certainly go there to get, which is odd because the dollar is worth less in Canada, but they go over there because it's cheaper to. Excuse me, it's cheaper apparently to uh, for for locations and stuff. I mean, oh, look yeah. at Jason takes Manhattan. They got pennies on the dollar in Vancouver. 
<laughs> yep. I totally agree about about Tyra Banks. Like nothing against her, like, but what she is, can what, she can go. Scene. Yeah, of her, of her, the juxtaposition between like, why couldn't we have just had this? And it could have been anybody in that control room. But no, we have to have her making a latte and dancing. It's just dumb. It's dumb. It, it was just another, a lot of money. Yep, just another big name at the time to put into your movie to try to gain some credibility. I guess I don't know. Oh man, nice. I do kill. like that kill, yeah. Because I don't know if you guys remember, especially twenty years ago, some of those tripods they you know they had those pointed ends, you know those legs that you could stick like in the ground for like outside and shit, and you could definitely pierce someone's throat with that. Oh man, and not only that, like Tyra is just terrible at her job. <laughs> She's just completely missing everything. The entire thing. <laughs> yeah, man, it's a shame. Yeah. What do you think about the Myers house in this movie? Looks I mean, it's fantastic. pretty grungy looking, huh? We're supposed yeah, to look that way. It looks fantastic. I, I'm. That is one thing that this movie will always get praised for me for is the fact that they completely restructured it down to the exact wallpaper. Like, looks great. Yeah, I mean, those stair that staircase is every Halloween fan knows that staircase too, up against the wall. Dude, I'm telling you, I'm getting you some Dangertainment sticker. I'm I'm making Dangertainment. You need a horror podcast uh, products, some oh, yeah. mugs and shirts. It's gonna we're going all the way to the top with Dangertainment. Dangertainment Horror Podcast. Changing the name, guys. One of these days, we're going to get Buster Rhymes on this on this show, and we're talking Dude. all about... I'll, I guarantee he's going to... I can see Buster right now like, you know, I never saw all of them, but this has got to be... I mean, mine was pretty damn good, right? Probably one of the better ones. Best ones, eh? <laughs> yes, sir, Mr. Rhymes. Yes, yeah. sir. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder if Busta saw this movie. I'm sure he did. Like, there's no he was at the he, premiere. He was at the uh, premiere. Yeah. <laughs> Say, I think he. I think he saw it. Yeah. Now, I can't remember on the because I can't. It's been a very long time since I've watched the special features. But did Rosenthal film all the different endings, or was that just an idea he had? Uh, if you remember, he. I think he filmed, I know he filmed at least one of them. Um, one of the alternate endings. I don't know if he filmed all of them. Pardon me. Wants to say that he did, but I don't quote me on that. So I'm sure somebody in the comments will let us know. Um, but he filmed the manhole one with the, you know, the fire fighter or whatever, looking down the manhole. And then Michael's like, eh, like reaches right. out. Yeah. Right. Cause I've seen that one. Um, but I haven't seen any other ones, so I don't know. <clears throat> but yeah, if we're going and recasting, uh, we're re we're also recasting Thomasy e. and Nicholas, the guy, the American Pie kid. Um, just annoying in this movie. Someone could have done that better. The grungy, the grungy dude with the curly hair can stay. He's kind of funny. Um, the redhead's got to go. Um, yeah. We so like half of the can stay, half of the friend group gets recast. Yeah. I'm with you. I like our lead a lot. Yeah, she's fine. I just think the script they gave her was kind of ass. I like Rudy, too. I do like Rudy. I think he's funny. Yeah, me too. Like, first thing on his mind is the kitchen. <laughs> like, uh, What was I going to say? Son of a bitch. Oh, Okay, titles. Are we keeping the title? Or are we renaming? Or are we renaming the movie? Halloween Dangertainment out this motherfucker. Um, <laughs> no. Probably. I like the work print title. It is literally like Resurrection sounds so cheesy. Like Michael's back from the dead, even though he didn't die in the last movie. So it's no. Um, I would have kept the work print title, Halloween Homecoming. I liked that. That's right, because I was I was in my head when I was getting ready to ask that question that came into mind, but I was like, I'm feeling a deja vu moment right now. And yep. Halloween homecoming is a great title. Mm -hmm. I mean, he literally is coming home. Like I don't, I don't know. I just thought it was cool. I, like I also, Halloween homecoming. 
the deleted scene have you seen i'm sure you have seen it like the super eight footage they filmed of like young michael in the backyard at like a family barbecue yeah that was in 25 years of terrors where i first saw that they should have kept that for the open of this movie i don't know why you wouldn't i liked it oh i like that too i like that a lot you know, and you had Lori giving her like monologue over it about his eyes, like, you know, being evil and stuff. I'm like, that's cool. Like, oh, yeah. Should have kept it. Now, when we get to a kill later on in this movie, Christian, I'm going to tell you right before it happens exactly where to look. You can clearly see that this body is a mannequin. Like, you can oh, clearly. Yeah. It's a mannequin and it's so obviously not a human that it's, it's just like borderline unforgivable, but oh, I can't wait. I absolutely can't wait. <laughs> and it was one of the, the funniest thing is dude. I, I noticed this not long into seeing this movie for the very first time. One of the first times I'm like, wait a sec, there's no blood. And then I'm like, what the fuck is that? Like, so yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's an eyesore. I have a, I have a, I have a <clears throat> guy I went to high school with and right when I was getting into horror at the time, I was talking to one of my friends, his name was uh, Bevan about it. And I'm, I'll just never forget. And he's like, dude, uh, I've got Halloween, man. I love that movie. You want to come over? We'll just have some fun, chill out and watch that. I was like, sure, man. I remember one, I went, I went out to his house that day and like, you know, when like he, you can't blame like vague movie fans, like people that like movies just aren't a big part of their life. (laughs) And he, I go to his house, he goes, Hey man, you ready to watch it? I was like, sure. And when he had Halloween, what he meant was he had Halloween resurrection. It didn't dawn on him that there was anything more than one movie. And you want to know the truth though? You know, I know that I did. You watched it. I didn't even say anything. <laughs> I just was like, yeah, man, put it on. Like, I didn't, I didn't want to be that guy because like, he, Bevan was a good dude still is like, I didn't want to be that guy that was like, dude, you realize this is like the eighth one, right? Like, I was just yeah. like, hell yeah, man, put it on. And he loved the movie. He's like, this is so fun, man. I can't remember watching this before. I was like, oh yeah, it's great. And it? it's one of the greatest horror movies. Ever. <laughs> <laughs> I've never conversated with him again about it ever after that, but it's got robbed of an Emmy for sure. <laughs> Oh man! I know. Is there is there any relatability to being the guy at the party? I take it not. You're a good looking guy. You probably uh, you probably had chicks yep. on you. This is actually incredibly relatable because believe it or not, I don't like being around a bunch of people I don't know. Like, yes, I I did for a period in my life do the party scene thing, especially when I moved out and got my first house. Me and my buddies were throwing house parties like every weekend. Um, but nah, I was never the type of guy that wanted to congregate in the middle between everybody. Like it was just never my thing. Like oh, I, I wouldn't be off in a closed room, like on the internet, but like, you know, I'd be, I'd be off a ways with just a few people. You know, I wouldn't, I, I was never the type that wanted to be the center of attention. It was, wasn't me. So there's relatability there. What about you? I mean, same, same exact way, man. I, I can get on stage and perform but it's because I'm not conversating with people. Yes. If I'm get dude, I can't stand. I don't go to, I'm such a jackass. I'm going to lie to you. I don't like going to, to shows to see other bands. Not because I think I'm better or anything like that. I can't stand standing around people. I get on, I get very yeah. uncomfortable. Especially, yeah. especially with my own band. My own band COVID gives me. Some, that. Oh yeah. COVID made it, it worse. But be like, stay away from me. Like, yes. Yeah. Yes, dude, I tell you, my band gives me shit all the time because I play shows and I go home and they're like, all right, man, where, where's Christian at? And I leave. I try to explain to them. I just don't relate to people. <laughs> I I just don't, man. And I get very uncomfortable and they want to hang out with me. And I appreciate that. And I understand that. And I have to make an effort to actually do that. But I am so bad at just. Dude, I, I feel like I feel like I'm gonna explode physically when I just stand around a crowd of people. I have to get away. It's nothing personal. I don't think I'm better than anybody. I genuinely just I don't know, man. I just get very uncomfortable. Which is weird that I'm in a band and I perform, but it's totally different. I can get on stage and play like nothing. But don't give me standing around a bunch of people I don't know talking. 
No, it's relatable, man. It was the same way. You know, we could play a show um, or when I was in high school and I was also in choir and I like literally always every show we had, um, every concert we had, I always had like multiple solos and it was never like, I was, but I was never the guy that was like, I want a solo. My choir teacher was always like, you're getting a solo. I'm like, okay. Um, so like whether it was right after a choir concert or right after like my band played a show and they wanted to hang out in the green room with other bands and stuff, I'm like, I'm just trying to go home. Like, yeah, I don't, it's, it's nothing personal. And it was the same thing after choir concerts. Everyone wants to catch up and people wanted, Oh, you did so great. I'm like, I don't, I just want to go home. I want to like, go home. <laughs> yeah. I'm not about that. Just, just text me. Yeah. You know, <laughs> I wouldn't say I hate people, but I would say I don't like people like a lot of the time. And that's not to mean that I'm not like, a an open and 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 you know likable person and i i believe i am but it's just like i don't like being forced into social situations because it seems like except you know what i mean like i want to do it on my own i don't want someone to feel like i'm being forced to do it so and, and you know what else i think too in today's day and age with the internet and being able to talk to and 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 become acquaintances with people that genuinely you vibe with and have in the same interests in like right now i am totally 100 percent relaxed comfortable i have no jitters about talking to you right now even if you were here it wouldn't be the same because we've gotten to know each other and, and stuff but like we have the ability as humans now with the internet to find people that we genuinely want to talk to you know it's like before that i'm not trying to say that like finding real friends in your area is not good no that's not true but it's just like dude we have the capability now to genuinely find the people that we can relate with and want to conversate with instead of just i know this is going to sound really shitty but it's like instead of just like you know settling for <laughs> you know what i mean uh, yeah i get what you mean it's that's that goes back to kind of what both of us were saying you know in our own way is like you don't want to feel like you're forced to conversate with people. You want it to be organic. You want it to be people you want to talk to, which makes sense. Why, when I say I don't like people, people are like, but you do a YouTube channel and like, you know, you do a bunch of live streams and you talk with everyone. It's like, I, because I know these people share my common interests. Like I can talk to these people because I know these people get a feel for who I actually am. But if I'm out in the world, in a group of people. And I don't know a damn thing about any of you. I can't feel like I can just go. So guys, like how many people you think are going to die in Halloween kills? Like no, I can't, can't do that. So it's different. Can't do that. Oh yeah, totally dude. I, that's it. You know, that's totally it. And it's cool. It's, I don't know. That's why I, I try to tell my fiance all the time. She doesn't really understand it, but I tell her all the time. I'm just like, look, it's really cool. Like to have these, relationships with these people like on youtube and stuff and then want to follow you on social media and then they you know i'm sure you get it every day too it's a, it's an everyday thing that i have someone message me like hey look i found this like look at this or they tag me on twitter or instagram and it's like it's cool that people care enough about like you to want to like share that moment with you um it's it's a gift that keeps on giving dude it yeah. it, it 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 validates all the hard work we do and doing the show i mean granted look I, even if this wasn't going live or i wouldn't put it uh, putting it on i look forward today to saying like hell yeah i'm gonna watch with nick we're gonna have we're gonna watch resurrection have a good time but you know to know that it's gonna go out there and somebody else is gonna be able to take this stream or take this podcast and cue it up with them to watch the movie and they're feeling like they're part of something with us too you know all the shit that we give like the internet and how it divides people and makes us less uh personable i call bullshit on that i think that's a personal problem if somebody if somebody is becoming less personable or, or or more detached from society i think this brings us closer together personally yeah. you know i think it's just the way you use it yeah you might you might be going to the wrong sites you might be talking to the wrong people you know uh that's that, that's a personal thing but yeah, the internet has done more harm, more good than bad, I think. And uh, but yeah, I feel the same way. I've never once like leading up to a, us doing an episode of this <clears> been ah <throat> oh, gotta record, you know, the podcast. No, I might have like a shitty day. Like I had a shitty day today, but like 
part of the, and then you, sometimes you may be like, I don't want to stare at my phone for two hours. Like, but as soon as you get into it and you start it, it's like, you don't even realize you're doing it because you're just free flowing. You're having fun. The time literally flies. And there's times where we're like, shit, we've gone over two hours. Like we, yep, we should probably cut it, you know, but so so getting back to this are they are is busta and and what's your face they're a couple yes they're a couple dude why couldn't the rock have been in this movie oh man <laughs> all right here we go at least guys. the rock at least the rock killing myers is this the kill you're telling me about but this is the watermelon with a wig on it that's what you're about to see is it's literally just a watermelon with, that they put a wig on you can kind of tell <laughs> yeah rick rose is that it right yeah, it's a watermelon with a wing on it. Oh, at least, but you know, it's something physical that you can feel when you yeah. see it. So, yeah. but no, just always- right before we get to that kill, I will let everyone know. You guys, pay attention. We don't need to pause it or anything because I'm telling you, when you are looking for it, you'll be able to see it. As soon as I tell you what it is, when we get there, you're gonna be like, "Holy shit, it's right there!" Yeah. The, by the way, they're terrible at their job. They're terrible. They miss every every death. And no one questions anything. Oh, they're just probably screwing around with their cameras again. Anyway, back to getting drunk. Like, man. You know, I, I never understood why with these movies, and you could say the same for Friday the 13th or, you know, not so much Nightmare on Elm Street because the makeup still suction form to Robert's face. So it still really just looks like him. But like, why? Like, really, why do the masks have to start looking different? That. that that just doesn't really that kind of stuff doesn't happen anymore. It's like No, I really think it was artists and effects artists and, and whatnot wanting to put their own stamp on the mask. Like I really want I think they want their mask to stand out. And it's like, yeah, I can get that. You know, every artist wants to leave their mark. Um some of them though, I wonder are how the Akkads let them fly. Like I don't think like- there's mask in the halloween franchise that i haven't grown to accept at least like i can accept all of them but if i was a casual movie goer and i watched a movie like say halloween five or four you'd be like that is not michael myers mask <laughs> like no i mean yeah i'm with you i love the nicholas cage myers yeah you know but dude if you if you stuck it side by side with part one it's like damn how did we how did we get here <laughs> like, how did they allow this like yeah yep, that's good I mean, Jason's no worse, dude. Somehow his 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 skin regenerated somewhat yes. from seven yeah. to eight while being st- stuck stuck underwater, which makes yeah. even less sense. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and then in part nine, well, that's a different that's a different world, so I'll leave that alone. But Demon Slug Jason, Demon Slug Jason, he was eating whoppers. You know, he yeah. was pretty hardy. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um. Another thing, dude, like I know Nick, I, I I wonder if Nick Castle was ever approached to do this damn movie again. He didn't get asked to do part two because Dick yeah, Warlock kind of part two, that shit probably sailed because then he became a filmmaker in his own right. You know, um, I think he kind of I don't really think he did much if any acting at all after that, really. You know, he went into no, his own. He filmmaking. did. Yeah, he he was pretty dude. He's done some really big movies. Uh, one of his cult films that he did was Major Pain, which I yep. grew up loving that movie. He also did Dennis the Menace in ninety two yeah. wow. or three, and that was a big movie, dude. So Castle, you know, I, I think people not not you know, I think a lot of people just they you know know him as Michael, which makes sense because it's still the biggest thing the dude ever did in terms of what fan base he has. But he's he's certainly got some big credits to his name the last starfighter was a pretty good little movie he did yeah i would have liked to see you know nobody's ever really talked about this i wouldn't have mind to see him take a stab at directing a halloween movie i mean he damn well could have i'm sure yeah, he played the role arguably the best better than anybody else you understand the character you understand what makes him scary i think that's the most important thing for the director in these movies how do i make michael myers scary how do i make him believable you know, what um, I want, you know what I really wanted, dude? And I just feel it's probably close to too late because of John's age. I mean, he's not an old, old man, but damn, let the son of a bitch direct ends. Like, let Johnny direct ends, man. That would be fantastic. But here's the thing. Personally, I don't think John wants anything to do with it. And I think I yeah, it, 
yeah, we both, it, it, yeah, it's more just like, I'd love to see it. But John is like, yeah, I'll do the score. And by I'll do the score, I'll do like 20% of the score. And, uh, and that's not a knock on John guys, but Chris and I have talked about this. We, you can tell a lot of this modern flair is probably Cody. Um, that's what I think. Yeah. Cody's a damn good musician in his own right. He really, really is. Um, it definitely runs in the family. Um, so I think that's as close as John ever wants to get. I don't think he ever wants to direct again, period. I mean, which is a bummer because even the, his latest movie, the ward, which a lot of people were, it, that movie's reception was literally just lukewarm. I've never really seen people say it's garbage, but you don't find many people that say it's great. It's just like, yeah, it was okay. Like whatever, like, but it's not a carpenter movie you think of. So it's like, did he lose his touch? I don't think that's necessarily the case. I think maybe he just lost his passion for it. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, it's. I don't think he wrote it, so it's like it's just. Uh, he just took a job, you know. Yeah. I mean, even Ghost of Mars, even though it's not his greatest work either. When you watch that, I mean, it still feels very much like a John Carpenter movie, and that was when he was still working full time. So it's like, you know, all that time had gone by and. I need to rewatch the ward again. I, I saw it basically a year after it came out. It hit Netflix. And then <clears throat> I was like, holy shit, that was John Carpenter. Mm -hmm. um, but I don't know. I don't want to see him end that way. I would love to see him just do one more Halloween movie. I would just too. give me that beautiful, simple, simple, you know, editing, simple cinematography. Let him end Jamie Lee Curtis and or well, Laurie Strode and Michael Myers story. Let him end it. He started it. Let him end it. But it's a pipe dream. Let's start a petition, guys. No matter how good Halloween Kills is, David Gordon Green, you must step down. I don't think a petition will work. It's going to make, they'd have to pay John millions. Oh, yeah. You know who would probably be a badass director or could direct a movie really great? I don't think he ever did, but, you know, Dean Cundy, as good as he is at the camera. Dude, that's half the battle. I mean, yep. I, I bet you Cundy would 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 kill directing a movie. Oh yeah. Oh shit! Here he comes. Damn, he busted that one. No, that's all the fake. That's all the fake like bodies. Oh my god. Oh, they're not real. It's like Dangertainment set that up. <laughs> Look at Buster. <laughs> Oh, that is hilarious. <laughs> She's like, oh, there's victims. Yeah, Michael Myers brought them all home. He them shoved them in a house. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. <coughs> oh, Jesus. All those prop rocks, man. They're all made out of styrofoam, but they look really good. Mm -hmm. Like, um, when I was a kid, I didn't realize they could make such thing as, like, foam props and stuff like that like some street fighter the 94 jean claude van damme movie jean claude when he's fighting uh he was fighting B uh, general bison at the end he gets like kicked and john like flies back 20 feet and when he does his head lands on the back of one of those it's like a it's one of those giant like rock rubbles it's like the wall collapsed in and it turned into like rubbles and big rock pieces of concrete and his yeah. head hits the back of one and i as a kid i was always like he has to have a really strong head because i would have <laughs> killed me and then you know i didn't realize they make that shit out of styrofoam now but oh here's the yep. double myers double myers <laughs> and you can clearly tell which one's busta because he has a huge head so <laughs> like, it's it stretches the mask out <laughs> He's got a he's got a corn dog head. <laughs> like, look, like just wait till you see it in the light. It is so obvious which one's Busta Rhymes. Dude, this scene is so dark too. Maybe it's because the lights are on in here or not. But like, dude, it, it is just. Oh, it's dark. Yeah. I have a replica, a good replica of this mask too. Uh oh. I'm playing Michael Myers. This is another part in this movie that's like a cardinal sin where everyone's like, you're literally going to let Busta Rhymes talk to Michael Myers like a bitch, and then Michael just turns and walks away. I know. What the hell, man? Why did he not kill him? 
I just it makes no sense. Rick Rosenthal couldn't even give you an explanation. But Rick, Rick Rosenthal did touch on this scene and said he wanted to the whole purpose of the scene was for Buster Rhymes to give the line, get the fuck out of Dodge. Like that's literally what he said. He was like, I just wanted him to say that. And then Rick was like, and it's funny because then Michael turns around and walks away like he listened to him. Ha ha ha. That's the problem. That's the problem. You can't make fun of Michael. No. That's that's the cardinal thing, man. Another cardinal sin when you see it in Freddy versus Jason when Kelly Rowland's character is doing it to Freddy. And it's like Dude, the fact that she, you know, you know, you know that's the one character in that movie I'm not a big fan of is Kelly. I mean, I don't know, man. I she's just she's just mean spirited the whole movie. She's just mean spirited and she's she adds nothing to it. And then her her claim to fame in the movie is calling Freddie the F word, which was yeah. super tone deaf to do that anyway, but also just again making one of these iconic slashers look like a bitch. It's like, why? Like, what's the point of that? Like, I don't know. At least Jason killed her dumbass. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Jason's, Jason. But see, that's the thing. She got what she got. And, and like, so I'll take that over this because yeah. Busted didn't even get his. He needed to get his. That's that's the real sin, you know. I wonder if Busta Rhymes was, or not. I wonder if Rick Rosenthal was just worried, like, well, if I kill him, I'm gonna piss off Busta's fans. Or <laughs> okay, maybe Busta didn't want to die. Yeah, I don't know. No. And this is another thing too. As much as I love the Myers House, and I really, really do, this underneath it is completely unrealistic completely i promise all of you right now if you have a basement and you break through the walls of your basement i promise you are not down in manhattan sewers right now like i it's it's just it doesn't happen uh not in a residential neighborhood like this so i get it like aesthetically you know all these creepy you know claustrophobic corridors and michael's been living under here why why he has his house why would he live in the sewers and why would the sewers be like a city sewers right underneath his basement it just just a minor gripe i have always irked me yeah and this nice little prop rat that just starts flopping around so <laughs> obviously prop rat. oh yeah yeah Why would you, <laughs> like I guess he's gotta eat something. Yeah, I mean we know he eats dogs. What's up with the like the clear body flashlight? I know. I don't know. You just... could have made that reveal scary too. Like I really think if you would have utilized the score, maybe the lighting not being so shaky and out of focus. I think you could have made that a good jump scare, but it's again, just piss poor. And I don't know why she's not trying to slide through that. She definitely could. Oh, I mean, if your adrenaline's, if your adrenaline's going that fast. Yeah. I'm, 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 I don't care if I get cut a little bit while I'm doing it. I'm going through there. She spent 20 seconds on it. You damn right. Reminds me of that scene in Halloween Six with the uh, chase down yep. that corridor. Like that was, I, I like that. That was done better. That one's actually done well. Yeah. yeah, one of the most memorable, if not the most memorable, kill from Halloween Six. One of my favorites. That movie's just that movie has great kills. Mm, yeah, great. Kills. John Strode blowing up. Beth. <laughs> <laughs> Beth's death in Halloween 6 is honestly one of the scariest, I think, in the Halloween franchise. Oh, yeah. Just the sound design to the way it's like cut back and forth and just how slow mo. And you can tell he's just freaking hammering that knife into her back. Like, mm. yeah, that's a great kill. One of my favorites in the franchise. This movie was released in 2002. And this kid right here his computer screen is like this nice widescreen TV and dude in 2002, I don't remember any widescreen TVs existing. 
I'm no. sure they did at a very, very high end. Dude, a freaking brain scan. That movie from 94 with Edward Furlong. Kid's got a widescreen TV in his house. I'm like, Jesus Christ, man. How rich are you? Like, Oh, his house, his bedroom was really nice in the movie. So I'm, I'm assuming that his dad or his family in the movie had money. But it's just like, damn, man. I don't remember this stuff existing back then. Yeah, I don't. Them big I box just, black TVs. Box, you know, the box TVs. Yeah, big bastards. My dad was always a fan of, we had these basically up until his last time he bought new TVs. He loved to get those um, TVs that, you know, were on wheels and they were big and they had the big speakers below them. It was like a, like the whole thing. It was like a TV with the, the body of it had big speakers at the bottom and they were on wheels. It was like a combo thing. He loved those. He used to, he always bought those. And then finally, he got a sound system. He had the old school sound system where he ran the wires up through the roof and put the speakers oh, in the corners yeah. of the room. Mm-hmm. And then he got a widescreen TV. So. We had one of those when I was younger. <laughs> oh, that's Busta. <laughs> Turn off the cameras. Turn off the camera. What do you expect, Busta? <laughs> I mean, yeah. Get your ass whooped. Where did he get the same exact mask? <laughs> One of the many. Why? Well, I, I look. Okay, hold on. That's not fair, because I do not give the kid from Jason Takes Manhattan any shit for that. So I'm I'm gonna retract my question. Go. I'm gonna excuse me. I'm gonna redact. Uh, I'm gonna redact that. <laughs> No, Bust is giving his speech. They want a little razzle dazzle. <laughs> <laughs> Michael Myers is a killer shark. Can't wait for that. All right, guys. So we're, I think we're about to get it. Hold on, let me be reminded of where we're at. Isn't Buster the guy that, that, you know, kind of reinvented himself years ago with that kind of rap, like that super, super fast, nonstop? Yep. Good for him. <laughs> yeah, you can say that. Okay, so this, here we go, guys. Jen, as you know, spoiler alert, I'm sure you've all seen this movie, is about to get beheaded. When she gets beheaded, it's going to show a close-up shot on her from like overhead almost kind of, well, not overhead, but kind of where you can see her neck, where the Mm -hmm. stump is. This stump is so obviously plastic, you can literally see scuff marks on the neck. Like literally scuff marks. It is, there's no blood, nothing. It doesn't even look like they even attempted to make it look like a human. It was literally just like, okay, cut the mannequin's head off. And then like, oh my God, like, look at that. Save money on the shot for sure. But I'm telling you guys, everybody pay attention right here. You don't even need to pause it. You'll see it and you'll be like, oh damn. Here we go. I'm ready. Did you see it? <laughs> it is so bad. It's clearly plastic. Like, dear God. Oh, man. No attempt at making it look real. Like, save as much money as we can with this shot, guys. Like, let, let it roll. <laughs> Be fun. At least don't catch that on camera. And you kept it in the movie? Like, dear God. But please, guys, tell me how Rick Rosenthal is a great director and we're being unfair. 
I've actually had people talk to me like that before, and I'm like, dude, come on. I think it's very important that everybody find that people find, you know, enjoyment in people's work. Absolutely. But Rick Rosenthal ain't no Kubrick. Pick him up, squeeze his head. Oh. Subtle, but I like it. Yeah. It's not bad. Smash the skull in a little bit. Almost looked like he was smiling there. That's kind of creepy. Yeah. Dude, whoever, whoever, like, Rosenthal had certainly had a hard on for, for the blue. Get it <laughs> for the, for every time Michael comes into a shot, you only get to see part of his face and it's shaded. Oh, yeah. Like, he had a hard on for that in this movie because every damn scene is damn near is like that. Yeah, I love the the blue hues like throughout the movie. Though I will say that because the blue has always looked really pretty in these movies. <clears throat> Halloween Six does it really well too. I oh, do. It's just it's Blue City. Yeah, that whole movie just reminds me of the color blue. Maybe it's the poster too. I'm sure the yeah, poster. The poster definitely, yeah. Rudy, see, I like Rudy. He's resourceful here. You know, yeah. do what you can to try to. First of all, he sacrificed himself to save her so she could get away. Respect. And he's basically like, I'm not going out like a bitch here. Respect. Mistake he makes is not trying to book it himself. Don't try to don't just Hold up, Kelvin. You like sushi? <laughs> <laughs> you like sushi? <laughs> Dude, just throw the blades in his chest, you know? Or just run out the house, dude. Fly out the window. Jump out the damn window. Nobody thinks about jumping out the window in this movie. Shit, dude. I would have. I would have. Kara Strode. Kara Strode in Halloween Six. It's her first thought. She launched. Nope. And that was just. And that was just an old grandma. Yeah. <laughs> nope. I'm out. That was just the grandma. <laughs> She's a really likable character. I, we keep talking about Halloween Six, but she she really is a really likable character. She's smart. She doesn't oh, do yeah. a bunch. of stuff this no. is obviously a callback to bob from the original and the, that shot's cool the feet dangling you know all that but Double i felt life. like that was unnecessary like what now it just looks <laughs> <laughs> it's just corny you can see it's high as a hollow body <laughs> Here, let oh, me just shit. The door now like oh man My movie's still playing. Don't worry. No, oh, you're good. <clears throat> oh, man. I'm still in here. I just got to something. You're good. Right, she's calling out for Deckard. Who's Deckard? That would be pretty cool if you, uh, if you were watching this Deckard. on computer and then a girl... And the show's saying your name in front of everybody, like, oh shit. Yeah, that's me, guys. She's talking about me. No big deal. We've been kind of going steady on the internet for a while now. <clears throat> I'm trying to see what everybody's costumes are. Right now, like well, whenever they whenever they show the shots. They're supposed to be from Pulp Fiction, obviously. We know that. Um everybody else, I really don't know. <laughs> a lot of people just have like, you know, you know, ghoulish top some with like silly cheap masks that's that right there is another thing that pisses me off about this movie literally says he's in the hallway don't scream and as she reads don't scream goes ah! Seriously. Yeah, wouldn't there be some latency in 2001 with like sick like with like you know oh, texting yeah. and stuff like that like <laughs> yeah you got like dude, these, dude these text messages are lightning fast <laughs> They had 5G back in 2002. <laughs> now, here's another thing, guys. All right, so she's smart that she opens the window here. She's like, I ain't going to be a sitting duck in this room. Absolutely. Problem is, it's a two-story house, and she looks down right there. She's not even on the full second story, and she's like, no, that's too high. Are you kidding me? Jump, jump. It's like, jump. I don't know. 
It's either it's either get stabbed or jump. I mean, you just you might, you might sprain your ankle. Okay, it's either that or die. I mean, I I don't know. I do think this is cool. I like this shot that's about to happen. He just busts through there with his head, man. Mm. She kicks him. There you go. You just got stabbed because you wouldn't jump. Now everybody's in there like they're like, screw this party. Everybody's watching in there. I wonder if my introverted ass would have been like, all right, I'm gonna go outside. Like, since everybody came in here, like, screw this girl's <laughs> I don't want to be around everybody. It's <laughs> a good question. Has anybody made a YouTube channel called Dangertainment? Oh, I'm sure. Yes, yes, yes. Um, he's a subscriber of mine. He's in my live chats a lot. Dangertainment? Dangertainment, yep. He was just in there tonight. Because I've made comments about his name before. Yep. Oh, they even got the logo. Yep. 2.36 subscribers. Nice little channel, you know? Yeah. He's a nice guy. Nice guy. He's... You know, always Halloween is his thing. I notice him in my live streams when we're talking about Halloween. So clearly with oh, that's a name. That's really cool. Name, you know, I would assume he's probably a sub of yours too, Christian. Maybe he maybe just hasn't chimed because he didn't chime in. He never, he, it's not like he talks a lot in the chat, but yesterday I noticed him yesterday and today because we were talking about Halloween kills. So oh, that's cool. Shout out to Entertainment if you're watching this. Is Busta still employed by you guys? <laughs> he got promoted. <laughs> the head of Dangertainment now. What if it is Busta that runs that YouTube channel? Oh, uh, that'd be so pimp. He does it like in disguise to go into Halloween fans' chats and videos to find it after talking shit about resurrection. Sucker. <laughs> I will say, you know, him going right at him, I will give him props for not being a pansy, but at the same time, then it gets just too hammy. You know, charging at him to try to take him down, I get that. Uh, karate chopping? Uh, That's criminal. Uh, yeah, I don't know how I'm feeling about that. <clears throat> Here we go. So you want to be on danger attainment? <laughs> dude, he, dude wow. that was an Uncle Jerry. That was an Uncle Jerry style roundhouse. <laughs> oh man. He is lucky she did that because he was dead. And us as the as the Film goer, the movie goer, we are unlucky that she did that because we didn't get to see him die. What the fuck? <laughs> you want the fuck on me? <laughs> Dude, he kicked the shit out of him. Yeah. Dude, where was just imagine if Busta had shown up had shown up in the opening scene of the movie. None of this would have happened. Yeah, Busta should have been one of the security guards. Dude, think about this. <laughs> Sheriff Brackett, Dr. Dr. Loomis, uh you name it. They couldn't stop him. Deputy Hunt, Halloween 2. Deputy Hunt. Sheriff Meeker. Sheriff Meeker. But Buster Rhymes. But Buster Rhymes. Dude, he's got Michael's number. Yeah. Just imagine if Buster was around in 1978. Michael is no match for the the uh for jujitsu. Somebody he needs to make a meme. I need somebody to listen to this right now. I need somebody to make a meme and make this go viral. <laughs> Somebody post a picture of like Michael Myers from the original 1978 and it's like my fall plans. And on the right side, it's got a picture of Buster Rhymes that says the Delta variant. 
<laughs> Dude, Busta has Michael's number. Maybe we maybe we should just accept it. Busta, if you're watching right now, please <laughs> if you're watching right now. <laughs> we would love to have you on. I mean, you're the only one that has been able to take out Michael Myers like that. So you, know, you let me know. There he is. Oh, he's, I forgot he stabbed him one time. Oh, he stabbed him twice. I forgot. Right in the shoulder. Dude, you get a good clear shot of this guy, and you go out of your way to lift your arm up and over like this to stab yeah. him in the shoulder instead of just going like that. I could have slit his throat. Stab him right there. This, this karate guy is going to try to dodge it. Just let me hit him <laughs> in the shoulder. About, yeah. He's like, I respect you. I'm going to just injure you. I finally, you know what, to me, this Myers mask almost has like a skeletal structure to it with the cheekbone yeah. inlays and stuff. The shading, the shading yeah. there gets depth to like the facial features. I've never hated this mask. I don't care much for the eyebrows and the lips, I think, are almost like purple. But aside from that, the actual like mold is pretty damn good. Yeah. Nice thick set of hair. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but nothing like the Nick Cage. <laughs> I love the Nick Cage mask, dude. Yeah, yeah, mullet. <clears throat> did did people have to pay to see this dangertainment? Or I would assume so. What does an online shit live stream cost in two thousand two? For YouTube, and where where is it showing? So many questions. Yeah, that will unfortunately never get the answer to. Might Damn, now in the both her legs. She got sliced on both. Mm. Guys, we're about to get one of the most iconic lines in the history of the Halloween franchise. Horror, horror history. Period. This is for Rudy. <laughs> oh my god and unfortunately we never got to see Tyra Banks die I think a lot of us would have loved to have seen that especially with how bloody that mess is like another cardinal sin Oh. Here we go. What the hell happened to Tyra Banks? I don't even remember. That's what I'm saying. We didn't get this. We don't see. <laughs> we she has this massively bloody aftermath, and we don't see any of it. Oh, she probably refused to do anything like that on screen. I wouldn't be surprised. Does Rick ever talked about that? Not that I know of, no. You know, you want to know something I always wondered about? Like, as an actress, what does... Uh, excuse me, I say actress. Let's just say act, actor, period. What does some of these people have about being killed on screen in a grotesque way? Like, you know what I mean? Like, Yeah, I don't know. I don't, I don't know what... I don't know. Maybe it's because they're like, well, I have younger fans. Like, you know... Oh, you dude, remember God. Ellie Cornell? She complained about the way they wanted to kill her in Halloween 5. It yeah. sounded awesome. Yeah. They wanted to shove scissors down my throat, and I was like, no way. And I'm thinking to myself, what? That would have been dude, awesome. If somebody would have said, we're going to shove scissors down your throat, I'd have been like, they better be garden shears. Yeah. You know? And I just felt that wasn't a dignified way for Rachel to go out. What do you want? How do you want Rachel to go out? For him to softly and slowly slice your throat? Like, oh, dude, it, just so stupid. Yeah. It's Michael Myers. He's, it doesn't matter what character you are. If he gets his hand <laughs> you're dead. Like, Get up, Michael. Karate round two coming mm -hmm. in. Always dig a fire scene. The fact that that box is apparently too heavy for her to lift off of her leg is laughable. Yeah, just that's just a little inner little you know, that's a little uh powerhead interface thing. Probably and, weighs like three pounds. 
if if that yeah yeah this is because that looks like a two channel that thing looks tiny <laughs> so it's probably yep. like three pounds oh my god i can't get it off my leg i like the shot of the knife there though how it's all chipped and worn like i think that was cool it's just like the first time we actually get to see michael well lit in this damn movie I might have He's seen like, it once or twice before but oh shit it's my crypt tonight yeah, dude, he's nervous. <laughs> Please, no more. Again, man, like, if he would have died... He should have died right here. It, it makes been. no sense, dude. Like, he, he absorbs those blows like nothing, like a whisper in the wind, but the roundhouse kick sends him... Yeah. Damn, he launched Buster right there. Look Buster at Buster should... trying to act like he's passed out. That's <laughs> so bad. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Jesus. Yeah. And he just see... wakes right the hell up. Wakes right the hell up. Yeah. And gets him in the nuts. Look, if your purpose is to have a final girl, she should have been the one to quote unquote take Michael out at the end. <clears throat> Buster should have died right there. And while he's distracted killing Busta, she ends the movie but you do a disservice to your final girl because you essentially just made Buster Rhymes a final guy and it's like damn wow man I do like the way Michael looks getting electrocuted yeah. on yeah. the damn man it's just a bummer I think every F-bomb in this movie was from Buster Rhymes oh yeah You can clearly tell it's springtime, which always bothered me with these exteriors. <laughs> so green, there's flowers and everything. And I'm like, ah. Oh. Uh, I like how the fireman is like, this dude with the hose is clearly just soaking down <laughs> nothing. <laughs> there's not even <laughs> smoke. Fire like, out. Dude, at least put like a smoke bomb under there so it looks like the shit's hot. <laughs> there wasn't even any smoke. <laughs> Turn on the hose. You're alive. <laughs> what is this a Nintendo game? <laughs> Dude, these texts are just flying in. What kind of what is that? What kind of phone is that? iPhone 12. How expensive were those damn things back in the day, too, I bet. And look at this now. Everyone's like, "Dude, you're my best Dude, you're friend." A pimp, you're pimp, dude. So Awesome. Actually, look, look what we got a maid football player. We got an Austin Powers looking dude right there. You know. Uh, is that a yeah. trash bag? <laughs> Here we go, guys. He's got a trash bag. <laughs> A killer shark. <clears throat> oh, man. This is really cringy right here, too. Wow, what a badass. <laughs> he reached so slowly towards the camera, too. Like, you thought it was going to be this, like, brutal thing. <laughs> Feel that. <laughs> <It's> exactly. <laughs> that, was, that was exactly it. Feel this. <laughs> Whoa. I, I do like the way Michael looks right here. They didn't even take the mask off. I, mean. I know. <laughs> Just leave I, him. Admittedly, though, you probably would leave that for the corner because that shit is probably stuck to his face. Here we go. Here we go. Guys, spoiler alert, this is how Halloween Kills opens. You've all seen the burnt mask. <clears throat> like some chicken fried. Dude, what's your vendetta against them, Busta? He didn't even do anything to you. Oh. You put <laughs> everybody in that position to get killed by him. Like I, I just I just can't dude, I love the fact that the son of a bitch, you know. They lit this. This looks like a. This looks like a shot from Saw. They lit the. They they lit the like the corner, you know, room right here perfectly. Like this, like 
Yeah, this is death, great light. This death gray, you know, reminds me of Saw, you know. Yeah. It's actually pretty cool. Good job right there. I just got I got to order my resurrection poster to go in this horror room, dude. I love this movie. <laughs> Yeah, upon rewatch, guys, I really think this might make it in my top three. <laughs> Dude, this is my favorite one after part one, two, three, four, five, six. Uh, Rob Zombies 1, Rob Zombies 2, Halloween 2018, uh, Halloween Kills, and Halloween Ends. <laughs> it's oh, I forgot to mention the... Halloween 6. Yeah. I oh, thought dude, look, ball... That is creepy looking. It, it's like green almost. Yeah, that's Look, they actually have smoke coming off of that. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Look at his eyes, dude. Holy shit. <gasps> oh! <laughs> Halloween Resurrection. Dude, look at that font right there for the title credits. That that oh, is yeah. literally I've back in that time, I saw that font everywhere. Every wrestling video game had that font, everything. Like that font is synonymous with that time frame. Yep, late 90s, early 2000s. Dude, I had a blast. I did too. I mean, like I said, amusement. Guys, I usually go back and rewatch every episode of the podcast. Um, and I can't wait to watch this one because there are numerous times where we were just laughing our asses off. And that was the point of this. We didn't spend this whole hour and a half going like, this movie sucks. This is terrible. Hate that. Hate that. Hate that. No, nah, there was redeemable stuff. But, dude, we had fun. That's all I care about. Yeah, we have to do. We're gonna have to do another another commentary, because like the fun thing about a commentary is the conversation's free flowing. And what I always want to do, I don't want to just trash. Like I want to watch do commentaries of movies like this, where we can not necessarily change our minds, but have fun and find the good in things. I think that's that's just a fun exercise to do in life. I'm trying to I'm trying to change the world. Okay. Yeah. Hey, well, if that is your stance, I'm telling you right now, the obvious choice for the next one is Freddy's Dead. I'll gladly do Freddy's Dead. I'll do, I'll do, dude, I will do uh, Freddy's Dead. Uh, I'll do any of them. Freddy versus Jason, I'd love to do a commentary on that. Um, Whatever. I just don't want to do like Halloween or Friday the 13th part two. I want to do the, I want to do, the 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 bastard children yeah the oddball you know? franchises yeah. yeah like texas chainsaw massacre next generation like oh god i would love to do that i would absolutely love to do next generation yeah i mean have a whole different perspective on it you're not watching it because you're like i'm expecting to get an oscar winning movie here no yeah. you're you know what you're getting so yeah i mean it was fun though it makes it fly by. You don't half the time you're, you're watching a movie, but you're more interested in the conversation you're having. Exactly. So let's see, let's end this right here with this Halloween resurrection. Uh, let's look at the box office. Uh, Is it 33 mil? 32. It says uh, the budget was 15 million and the box office was 37 million. Okay. Now, when we go to, Bob's movie a few years later, five years later is all it was. That's really not a long time. No. That's five years happened. later, 15, same budget, 15 million, and it did 80 million. And then the next year, H2, 15 million, I think it did 39. Same budget and 39. So wait up. So Resurrection came close to making what Rob's Halloween 2 did. Yeah. $2 million light. The only movies in the franchise that were less successful than Resurrection were 3, 4, 5, and 6. So it's middle of the pack when it comes to gross. I have I could tell you guys off the top of my head what the like overall gross was for each movie. Um and Resurrection is like middle of the pack. A lot of people think it tanked like really bad. It really didn't. Um, Jason X made like 12 million. That was a tank. Um, yeah. Here's one thing to keep in mind too. Um, the budget for Halloween 6 was 5. So it yep. says that in America it did 15. So 
you know, 15 times two, if 15 million is the budget and you double that, that's what 30, 15 plus 15 is 30. 30. So technically curse was more successful dollar for dollar than, cause I'm going to assume it's a, it's at least 5 million more outside of the U S yeah. They for- say that the multiplier to be profitable is two to two and a half times your budget. <clears throat> so yeah. curse was profitable. Resurrection was profitable. Basically, there hasn't been a Halloween movie, I think, that wasn't profitable. Um, even five, because I think yeah. Halloween five was only probably five million dollars. It made 11 million. So it made over two times its budget. So none of these movies have lost money. Um, some of them are just bigger hits than others. Like we talked about this a couple of weeks ago. Everybody over inflates Halloween four because it was number one at the box office for two weeks. Yes, it, it really went a, it went a box office smash hit, no, though, dollar wise. 17 but jesus christ dude i mean fuck halloween 2018 made 255 million dollars yep that can is you shit. imagine what kills would have done without covid and without streaming i still I, think it's gonna get close to 100 i'm being optimistic overall i think, it could get, I think overall kills could make 100 oh, I, I think overall it's gonna make like 150 like, I really don't think that's that conservative. I think worldwide opening weekend for kills worldwide is going to be 50 or so. That includes Damn, I'm still, I, I hope think, you're right. I hope you're right. I'm still conservative at 32. Well, I think domestically it's going to do about 35 opening weekend. But then taking in international markets, I think it's going to do 10 to 15 million. So I think o- worldwide opening weekend about 50 million. And they say normally at your average movie, it's about a two and a half time multiplier from your opening. So that would put it right on pace for about 125 at the end of its run. Dude, that'd be great. That'd be great. I mean, I just want to see it succeed in a selfish way for the box office. We already know we're getting another one, but these other franchises, we want Jason back. We want Freddie back. And as long as these movies are successful, it tells those studios, people still want those characters. Right. And, that's the only way you're going to get these characters, guys. I mean, aside from what's going on with Friday the 13th right now, we know that's a complete shit show. But the only way you get these characters to come back is by receipts. They they want the ticket sales. They want to see that you guys still want to see these guys. Um, so I was just talking about it last night. It's I'm honestly kind of jealous, and it's honestly really cool that you know my kids and my grandkids are going to get to see Halloween movies that will come out after the time I'm dead. Like, first of all, screw you for seeing Halloween movies I'll never get to see. But it's really cool that these they, these characters are going to live on, like, way longer than us. That's it's wild. So go yeah. support girls in theaters if you guys are able to do it safely. If you feel comfortable doing it, go see it in theaters once, twice, four times. Um, whatever floats your boat. You know, I would almost say, like, part of me wants to be like, oh, nothing lasts forever. But at the same time, dude, and this makes me so happy that my Universal Monsters, man, they'll, they're they they're not going anywhere. So I, w- I would say that it's probably the same for Michael and Jason and Freddy. Yeah, we were and, talking about that last night. Michael, Jason, and Freddy are your modern day, like, Frankenstein's monster, Dracula, the Invisible Man. Like, yeah. that might be. We need another wave of those, dude. I want a new slasher icon so bad. I think just horror icon in general, we got one with Jigsaw. Um, and I think there was potential for Sinister and Bagul. I really think there was potential there because he was creepy. But it seems like some of these for these movies, they just putter out after one, two, three movies and they just can't sustain a franchise anymore. Yeah, I liked Sinister a lot, man. Um, you know, it's just like sad because Saw, even Saw is done now. I mean, they spin offs, but I want, I want them to new. come back. I, I need Tobin Bell back. Like, I, I need that. I don't care if it's a sequel and you just use his voice because he's dead. I don't care if you do a prequel. I don't care what you do, but I don't want to see Saw die. Hmm. But yeah, I mean, this was fun. You know, yeah. if you guys did, let us know. We would love. Well, I mean, what, we're probably still going to do more anyway. But yeah. So uh, whenever this episode comes out, I forgot. I forgot which one's supposed to come out next. We're filming another one tomorrow. 
Um, yeah, resurrection was going to come out first, and then the next one was going to come out on October 1st. Perfect. So you guys will see what that is. So I hope you enjoyed this, guys. This was fun. This was the Halloween Resurrection Homecoming commentary extraordinaire. I had a great time. Uh, let us know if you enjoyed this. If you like it, we'll do more. And hopefully it was enjoyable, even if you didn't watch the movie and you were just listening to the conversation. That was that was the main thing I wanted to be done. So uh, we love you guys. Thanks for the continued support. Thank you for uh, listening on Spotify or wherever you get your streaming podcast, whatever. Uh, and we'll see you guys on the next episode of the You Need a Horror podcast. Bye. Oh, yeah. This has been a production of the You Need a Horror Podcast. You need it, we got it. Thank you for listening.